Hey, how's it going and welcome to The Guitar Effect, my name's Rob. In this episode I'm going to be taking a look at the current rig I'm using with my band Kampala. Um, but before we do, I will ask you to like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can be kept up to date every time I put out a new video. So, Kampala. Um, the reason I play guitar is I play, I've always played in a, a band since I was, for, I don't know, 15, so for like 30 years now, something like that. At the moment, that band's called Kampala, and we have our own studio um, here in Dublin in Ireland. And in that studio, um, we, rec we write, we record, we make content in the form of like live videos and stuff like that. And in order to do that, I use um, three guitars, into a pedal board and then that pedal board goes out into two amplifiers and the reason i'm making this video is um we're a three-piece uh, alternative band and i'm the only guitar player and i have to fill out quite a bit of space with the guitar and then i also have to be able to perform and sing and deliver a show so i have it set up i think quite well to facilitate all these different things to contextualize what i'm talking about i'm going to play a clip from um one of our songs uh, in a live video we recorded with this particular rig out of the studio so First of all, to give you an idea, here is um, a clip of a song called Home Away From Home by my band called Kampala from our studio. Sorry. Stop making yourself So there you go. Um, we're a moody, alternative, dark sounding uh, three piece band, right? So in order to do that, um, we plug in in ears, everybody goes silent in the room and we record all that stuff together at once. So we play live, we camera everything live and we make those videos. Um, and in order to do that, I use three different guitars. I use a custom built jazz blaster that I had made, which is a jazz master with humbuckers in it. I have a Yamaha Revstar and I have a Gretsch uh, Jet, which is the electromatic version. And that's the, the version of what I use. I take those three guitars for different uh, usage cases and I plug them into my pedal board. And then from the pedal board, I go out of that, which is an ES8 switching system with a lot of pedals in it. All this will be in the audio demo, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and I go into two Line 6 DT25s. Now, what's interesting is it's not a traditional wet-dry setup because um, there's a specific way wet-dry works, which is where your main signal goes into one amplifier and then only the, your delay repeats and your, your um, say, if it's chorus, only the vibrato signal your only your reverb trails come out of the wet amp that's not the way i do it i simply split the pedals between and um, the two amplifiers so my original signal in full goes into both amplifiers and then the delay and reverb generally is only on one side sometimes i i make it bounce back and forth between both amps if i want ping pong play but predominantly one of the dt25s is set to a vox ac30 sound one set to a fender twin sound and the fender twin has all the effects in it and the vox ac30 is, sound is dry and that's basically the way the whole thing runs so that's what I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, so I'm going to cut now to footage that I recorded out at our studio. It's not in the usual, not in the usual way that um, I produce these videos because it's a different location. So the you know the audio isn't as perfect and the camera shots aren't as planned out. But you'll get the idea and it'll show what the rig does. So here is my rig from my band Kampala. Okay, so welcome to our studio. This is where I stand and this is my setup in the studio and um, so you have my two amps behind me my two guitars and the rack there as well as the one I have on those guitars belong and the amp belongs to the other band 
Um, so what, in effect, is going on here is I have two Line 6 DT25s, as I mentioned. I will go over and take shots of both of the control settings so you can see how they're set. But effectively, this one is set to an AC30, and this one over here is set to a Fender Twin, right? So with that, here is the DT25 set to an AC30 on the bridge humbucker on my... You can see that that one is set with like just past clean. And it has that like mid range and top end. If I switch back to a single coil, the dynamic if I dig in, it breaks up. So if I just turn that off for one sec. Here is the Fender Twin by itself. Totally clean. That's on the single coil. Here's your humbucker. You can hear these humbuckers are really like big, aggressive sounding humbuckers. And then the two amps together. So what you're getting there is you're getting the mid-range and top end, kind of sparkly top end, but more importantly, you're getting a slight distortion off this one. Then you're, this one is completely clean. It's got loads of bottom end and loads of top end and a slight scoop to it. And together, they complement each other really well. So that's the two amps, right? So then what I do is I combine those amps with pedals on the pedal board to get all the different sounds I need for the band. So so starting off, I'm going to switch to memory uh, memory mode here, or sorry, manual mode on the pedal board. And now what it does is these switches on the ES8, which you can see, by the way, this pedal board. Again, there's a video about it on my channel. I sit the video up in the corner now. What it is, it's a load of pedals, as you can see, and they're all wired into this ES8 switcher in the front. And then I control things via MIDI and obviously bringing loops in and out. And that's basically it, right? So the first loop I have, I'll just turn them on off. The first loop I have is the Mosaic 12 string. I use that for certain things. Then there is a compressor. That's basically on every time I have a um, I have a clean sound. After that, there is this Screddy Rover Fuzz, which is a tone bender clone. It sounds like this. <laughs> works great for those like fuzzy lead passages but it also works great for chords so that's the fuzz after that there's the tc electronic nova drive which sounds like this I have a video about the Nova Drive, which I'll stick up here. All these uh, pedals are on videos on my channel, but the Nova Drive covers off so much different stuff, right? So it's a rat and a tube screamer, but then any combination of or singly is available via presets. In this case, this preset well, happens to bring up preset six on the rat, which is a heavy rat, but I can turn that off. It's also a tube screamer. I don't like tube screamers, really. I very, very rarely use them unless I'm looking for some specific, almost cocked wah type effect, right? So that's the the TC Nova Drive is my main source of overdrive and distortion. After that, I have this um, Mosky Silver Horse Clon Clon. <laughs> then we go into the reverb. Now, what's interesting is this is where the two amps come into play. Everything you've been hearing up to this point, all the drive and compressor and 12-string stuff has all been into both amps. But now this reverb is only on the Fender, which I call the wet amp.
And then, quite simply, it's a one knob reverb. It's this Hall of Fame reverb in the corner. All I do is, if I want less reverb, I bend down and turn it down. Generally, because I have the wet dry setup, right, I can have loads of reverb. But I still have that dry amp to keep all the, the picking dynamics and everything there and not get lost in a sea of reverb. Okay. After that then is the M5. Now they're not in this order in the signal chain. That, that's important. But here's the M5. It's at 2A. Tremolo. So that's the M5. As I go from preset to preset, and I'll show you two presets, the M5 does different things. And lastly, there is a TC Electronic Flashback X4 um, MIDI delay pedal with multiple different settings. Again, in this case, it's only on this side. On an analog sounding delay. Right, so that's all the different pedals. What I'm going to do is pick a preset for each guitar and then show you what each guitar does in combination and the reason I use it with the different um, settings that are in presets in the pedal board. Starting with this first song, I'm staying with Jazzmaster. Like I said, I use this for our heavier songs and this starts off as one of our quieter songs but gets into a heavy song. So it starts off with this dotted eight delay at the correct tempo. Now you can hear the delay and reverb only on one side. Then I hit the same switch on the pedal board and it turns off the delay and turns on a tremolo. Which again is timed via the ES8 to the 85 BPM. I don't know, you might be able to see it, but it's, it's here. That's the pace of this particular song. Then when that section's over, I hit the second switch and it brings in the fuzz and the delay and reverb again. It sounds like this. So as you can hear again, let's turn off that sound because it's noisy. So as you can hear again, it sounds huge. And again, the delay and reverb are only on one side, which allows me to have loads of delay and reverb to create loads of space, which is really important as I'm the only guitar player in the band. Then in this last part of that song, it goes into a very carefully timed delay, which is in the verse and sounds like this. And then it goes into the chorus. So in those settings there, in those in those presets, you can see I've had the um, I've had the delay do different types of delay. I've had the fuzz on. I've had the overdrive on. I've had the M nine or M five doing tremolo. So that's all just with single switches on the pedal board, which allows me just to concentrate on singing, performing, and everything is kind of being done automatically by my pedal board with really simple switching, which is really important. Next thing I'm going to do is show you a different guitar. So just take a second. I'm going to switch to the Gretsch. Okay, so this is an X guitar. Um, it's a Gretsch Silver Jet. Uh, it's just the Electromatic version. Um, again, there's a video about this guitar, which I'll stick up here. Um, I use this because of its very distinctive sounding top end. And in some circumstances, that's really, really what I want for particular songs. So again, to show some capability with the pedal board. In this situation, the song starts off with this rhythmic lick going... Neck pick... So that's a compressor, both amps clean. And then what happens is when I get to the chorus, I hit the same switch again on the pedal board and it switches to the boost on and the mosaic on and a delay and reverb for this kind of Quentin Tarantino-ish riff in the chorus, which sounds like this. Then we come into the next section and it's this really heavy fuzz kind of riff part, which kind of is 
So what's interesting about that is, first of all, there's a really powerful noise gate on, which shuts everything up, um, which is really important because that sound is really, really, really loud and obnoxious. There's no delay and reverb on here at all. So I just want to, I want this to be dry and nasty and really cut through. And um, it sounds like that. Now, when we come into the end of the song, we get into, again, with the mosaic and a big delay and reverb for this kind of strummed chord or picked chord part. You can really hear the top end of that guitar and the character it has, which neither of my other two guitars have. So this, I use this for those really like distinctive, busy, not busy is the wrong word, like really kind of cut through glassy guitar sounds. I use, that's what I use this guitar for. So there's one more guitar. Okay, so then the last guitar that I use is this Yamaha Revstar. This is the newest edition. This is only about three weeks old. Um, and what I use this for is my single coil sounds, because as you can see, it's got two P90s on it. Again, recent demo on this guitar on my channel. I'll stick the link up here if I can. Okay, so this song starts off with the screddy fuzz. I think it's for any delay or reverb. Hang on a sec. Yeah, a little bit of delay, kind of a short delay on this side, and it sounds like this. So that's just the, the, the fuzz on the delay. Then um, in the next section, this is where the single coil comes in. There's this kind of single coil pick part that goes... So you can hear there, I've got a delay that's uh, in eighths with this time of the song. I have an octo reverb, which I can turn on and off. Um, and then I have that single coil sound coming off the rev start, which works really well. And then for the last section of the song, I simply turn off all that and just turn on the rat and the distortion pedal. So again, importantly, as you can see, it allows me with the really simple switching, but doing loads on the floor to focus on performing or if I'm in here recording and concentrating on getting my vocal as little as I can while I'm playing, if we're doing a live video or something. And um, also a couple of things to note right before I go. So that's all the guitars and all the sounds and everything and the, the way I use the two amplifiers and everything, right? Over here in the edge of the pedal board chart, you can see this looper pedal. So what that is, this plays our backing tracks. So um, if I hit play here, you can hear the click going. The click gives us a 16 count, drummer gives us eight, and then the samples come in. So the click goes to the drummer's ears, doesn't go to the front of the house or in the room, doesn't go to the monitors. And the samples go to the monitors for our playing experience in the room. And that is the keyboard player and the drum loop player and everything in our band, and it works a treat. And that's kind of it, right? So that's the, the full band setup. Um, as in everything that I do in the band, I suppose. Uh, and also, the DT25 sound may have an amazing feature where you can switch off the standby, right? So put them both quiet and standby. In fact, I'll do that now. Hang on. So what's amazing is if I just switch to just a room mic for a second, I turn up my guitar. There's nothing there, but I'll do it again. And switching on the two recorded tracks, they are there. So what that means is I can bypass the speakers in the room and mute the amps, but they still go get recorded, which means I can use in-ears and record a track in the room where the guitars are recorded exactly as I want them, but there's no sound coming in so they don't spill onto the drum mics, which is great for live recording. Same thing with our bass. We can mute the speaker in the room and send just the DI signal to our recording device, and it works great. So um, really an amazing setup for writing, recording, and as I said at the beginning of the video, I'll take this whole rig out if we're playing a headline show of our own where we're doing a single launch or something like that, but most of the time it stays here. So, there you go. Um, I think that 
there's a number of different ways that this rig is really beneficial to the situation that I'm in, um, which I think is a lot of people, right? If you're in a three-piece band, you're the singer and guitar player. I think most of the time in three-piece bands, the guitar player is a singer. Obviously, there's other bands where the bass player or drummer may be the singer, but most of the time it seems to be the guitar player. If you have a lot of ground to cover off there, um, especially if you don't use tracks or something like that as a single guitar player in a band, I think using two amps and splitting your effects between those amps can really make the sound really, really big. So and that's one way that it really helps. Then having the ES8 on the floor where I can program in, you know, song one verse, song song one chorus, song one solo, song one outro, and just hit those switches for each one of those sections means that I can concentrate on singing, I can concentrate on entertaining, I can concentrate on delivering the band's show and um, without having to worry about tap dancing on effects pedals, which I just couldn't, I couldn't do all those things. I had to do that. So the ES8 is, is brilliant at that. And then I think the ability to, to mute the amps in the room for when we're doing uh, recording is, is really amazing. So yeah, um, that's my my rig rundown for Kampala. Um, incidentally, if you liked the clip earlier on, head over to our YouTube channel, um, Kampala's YouTube channel, that is. I'll put a link in the bio um, or in the, I'll put a link in the description of this video below. Um, and go over and to have a peruse around our YouTube if you like the stuff. Please do subscribe to our band. Um, we're about six months old in terms of we put our first single out six months ago. And so it's early days yet. Um, and we're trying to push it as, as hard as we can. So please head over there if you like the music and take a further listen. And if you do like it, subscribe and, and follow us. Um, and then separate to that, obviously, if you've enjoyed this video and if you've been watching this far, I thank you. If you have enjoyed it, like and subscribe to the channel and um, try your comments down below any questions about the rig or any thoughts about the rig i'll be really curious to uh to hear your questions and um yeah i guess i'll see you in another video again soon cheers bye bye